Welcome to part 2 of our Easy Lightroom Basics tutorial. Our next Lightroom slider is Whites. You would expect the white slider to lower the brightness of the brightest parts of your image, in this case the white wall, so let's see what it does. I lower the brightness of the whites and you see the image gets somewhat pale and hazy. I don't like that. So let's reset that. We can do it by double clicking on the word whites. And now let's see what the highlight slider would do. You see, it is much more subtle, it keeps the contrast, I really like that. What I like to use the Lightroom white slider for though is brightening the brightest parts of your image. Let's see, we have a landscape and the clouds, even though they are almost white, they are not exactly white, so I would like to brighten them a bit. Let's see, I lift the whites up like that. So it adds some contrast and I like the image now much more. Let me show you something that is pretty cool. Lightroom has a built-in auto function for the white point. Now, if I shift double click on the word whites, Lightroom will automatically make the brightest pixels in your image 100% white. The reference of that white point is always the current image brightness. So if I boost the image brightness, the exposure all the way up like that, the white point will go from plus 33 to minus 8. Keep that in mind. So whenever you change something, you should change the white points too. But don't do that to every image. If an image doesn't contain anything that is supposed to be white, shift double clicking on white will create that. That's not correct. Another thing I like to use the white slider for is night sky images. The stars in a night sky image are usually the only things I want to be really white. So if I lift the white slider like that, you see, the stars will become really bright and that's what I want. Now, would shift double clicking on the word whites work in this scenario? Let's see. Nope. Why not? because this part here is already so bright, it is overexposed. So Lightroom is reducing the brightness to make this 100% white. And that is the reason why I did not give you my raw files. I want you to understand what every slider does rather than mimic what somebody else does. What works on one image might not work on the next one. Our last use for the white slider will be making the background in a studio shot white. This was almost straight out of camera. Let me show you how it looked right out of camera. Like that. You see, I could even remove the barn doors top left and right in Lightroom. I didn't have to use Photoshop. But let's redo that reset again and look at the image. You already know that with the J key on the keyboard, I can show the overexposed areas in an image. And, of course, white is totally overexposed, because it can't get any brighter than that. Now let's see, the foreground is still not white. What can I do? I lift the white slider just a tad to make it white. And that's it. One thing I want to show you, now let's remove the overexposure warning again. The brightness of this man's shirt might be a tad too much. Now what can we do? We could reduce the highlights just a tad bit to bring it back. So we isolated this shot in Lightroom. We didn't even need Photoshop. So to sum up the white slider, I usually only use it to brighten the whites and not so much to lower the whites. On to the blacks. Similar to the whites, they are on the other extreme of the brightness scale, on the dark side, so they represent the darkest parts of your image. One of my preferred use for the black slider is backlit images. I really love backlit images for the airy and warm look it gives me, especially when the sun creates some sun flare in the lens. But that means that the dark areas will never be black. You know what we can do? We can shift double click on the word blacks to set the black point. But in this case, I feel it's way too much. So I'll dial it back to like that. Super warm, super beautiful, very airy image. 
There you go, we just changed one single slider and received this kind of image. Another backlit shot. Lowering the blacks, add some contrast and makes it beautiful. Even a studio shot can have some kind of backlight, like in this case the whites, so the white background reflects a lot of light back into the camera and creates some kind of haze. Now if I lower the blacks, I can add contrast and remove that haze. I hardly ever use the black slider to brighten the blacks. That's something I usually use the tone curve for, but I promised we will do a separate movie on that. That sums up the tone group. Next one is the presence group. The first slider in our presence group is the texture slider. What it does is it enhances or reduces very fine details in your image by increasing what is called local contrast. But you have to take care because ISO noise is also a very fine detail. So increasing the texture would also increase the noise. Now let's have a look. We have an image of a night sky again. What happens if I increase or reduce texture? You see? The contrast, the very fine local contrast is increasing and that's why I see even more stars. But you also see that increasing the texture slider will introduce noise. Let's have a look at a few other examples like these wooden tiles. Increasing the texture increases the texture of the woods, hence the name. Next is the detail of an ancient building. Raising the texture slider will increase the small details. It's similar to sharpening actually. Another great use for the texture slider is skin texture, but this time of course we don't want to increase it, but rather decrease it to smoothen the skin. What you see is that not only the skin will get smoother, but also the eyes will become a little blurry. But of course we don't want that. So let me quickly show you something I'm going to explain in detail in a later video. With the so-called adjustment brush, I can brush settings on smaller areas of an image, like here. I paint only the texture on her forehead. You see, I can increase the texture or decrease the texture only on the forehead without changing anything else in the image. Isn't that just super awesome? There are many more tips to come, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button right now before we head on to the next slider. The next slider is clarity. It addresses details that are a bit bigger, so to say. So it adds contrast to the slightly bigger details than texture. It works on some images, but not so well on others. So in fact, it is more a trial and error thing. What I find it works really great for is details in buildings. So let's move the clarity slider here. See, that looks super awesome. Reset that and once again, lift it all the way up. Or this one. Clarity all the way up, the difference is massive. What it does at times is it creates some kind of halo in areas with bigger contrast. That's something I don't really like. That's why I say give it a try. It is trial and error most of the time. There is, however, a workaround. You will learn that again later in the course. Now let's continue to a night shot of the same building. Let's see, clarity up. Wow. And this time you see there is hardly any halo. One thing you have to be aware of is that clarity makes skin look dirty and blemished. It enhances all the little blemishes in human skin. Some photographers like that portrait people usually not so much. If you want to show the evil or bad in people, that's the way to go though. Now check this. Now you know why I wear a beard. A slider that is great for landscape shots is the next one, the DA slider. What it does is pretty much what the name implies. Lift it up and you will see the haze miraculously disappears. Now what if you don't want the dehaze effect on the complete image and only like, for example, here? 
You already know how that works. Let's go here. Paint it. Let's make that smaller. Paint here. And now I can increase the DA slider only for that part of the image. You'll learn more about that, promised. Here is another example of my hometown. Not the most polluted city in the world, luckily, but there is some haze all the time. So what can I do? Just drag the DA slider like that. We have two sliders left in the basic tab, and since both of them add saturation, I'm going to discuss them together. First is vibrance. What Vibrance does is it adds saturation to the less saturated areas in an image. Saturation, on the other hand, will add saturation over the complete areas of an image, so also to the ones that were already saturated. And sometimes that may be too much. Same in this example. Vibrance will add saturation to the areas that don't have much saturation, like for example the skin tones, while saturation will saturate the complete image, so also the background and the shirts in the foreground. What you can also do with a saturation slider is desaturate an image and create some kind of grungy cool look. Remember though, you're working on the raw file. A raw file usually has already less saturation than for example a JPEG file would have. And finally, here's another tip in regard to saturation, especially for sunset. You can increase saturation by boosting the temperature slider, like that, and it won't even add a lot of noise. That concludes our Lightroom Basic tab. Let me give you one more tip for editing in general. Don't overdo it. Especially beginners tend to do that. Now, if that was helpful for you, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and put your thumbs up because there's a lot more coming up and you don't want to miss anything. If this video was helpful for you, please help us rank higher in YouTube searches by subscribing, leaving a comment or simply spreading the word.